Hello, everyone. Fantastic to be here. And even better to see such an awesome crowd. So thank you for coming to my talk. Are you enjoying J Prime? Yeah. <laughs> Um, my name is Patricia, and today we are going to explore live uh, hacking of JWT tokens. Uh, and we'll focus on security, or rather, insecurity of JSON Web tokens. So get ready for ride. First, a brief introduction. I've been doing professional software development for over 25 years, so that's a quarter of a century. That's impressive, isn't it? Um, I still love it. I've always been close to code, and I still am, and that bond still thrives today. However, over two years ago, I joined the dark side of platform engineering at Form3. Nowadays, I'm a staff SRE engineer at Form3. So basically, what do we do at Form3? Um, in short, Form3 is a financial cloud. We provide a um, payment as a platform model for quick and easy integration with payment schemes via REST API. We are fully remote very technology-oriented, uh, with microservices architectures. Uh, recently, we've uh, deployed this new payment platform based on free clouds and um, uh, Kubernetes. Uh, so as we are in the payment industry, so obviously, security is super important to us. What am I going to talk about today? Uh, just a brief introduction to JSON Web Tokens, just for all of us to be on the same page. And the key part of today's talk includes four demos uh, when we um, exploit various problems with RFC algorithms or implementations of JWT libraries or applications. Uh, and I'm going to exploit that, those vulnerabilities just to hijack your accounts. Um, but before we begin, there are a number of caveats uh, when it comes to JSON web, web tokens. But the very first one, how do we actually pronounce it? So yes, I told uh, you've already stole my job. Uh, so, as a Polish speaker, I usually pronounce it JWT. I'm not sure how you pronounce it in Bulgarian. How do you pronounce it? G okay, okay. I'm not going to uh, pronounce it that way. Um, anyway, uh, when we go to RFC, uh, the suggested pronunciation for JSON Web Tokens is JOT. Uh, and it's kind of a wordplay uh, because uh, meaning of jot in English li is like brief, informal note or something very small. So um, JWT tokens are also like small, brief, informal tokens. So uh, JSON Web Token. Uh, represents a set of claims that usually um, help in uh, identifying the user and uh, user's permissions. Uh, so usually it's uh, handy to take a look at some examples. So we see a JSON web token here. This is a long string of letters and numbers. When we take a closer look, we see that it contains three parts separated by dots. And those three parts are header, a payload, and a sig signature. So uh, all three are base64 URL encoded just to 
uh, allow for safe transportation over any text protocols like HTTP is. Um, and uh, when we take a closer look at a header, we see that it contains an algorithm, an uh, algorithm used to generate a signature. Then uh, payload contains a set of claims. Uh, in this uh, case, we have four claims like subject, issued at, issuer, and expiration. And sign a signature is just a binary content, so um, just to avoid any tampering of, uh, of JWT tokens. Uh, so it looks simple, right? What could go wrong? A lot of things, believe me. Uh, so when we think how those uh, tokens are used, basically we have a server, we have a client, and uh, a server is responsible for generating of JWT tokens. And then those tokens are passed to a client. Uh, and client, uh, when we are talking about uh, web-based clients, so um, they usually store those tokens uh, uh, in uh, a session storage uh, in a browser. Uh, so, uh, and uh, with each subsequent request, uh, this token is being sent to a server and uh, Server. In that case, the server verifies the token whether or not it's still it, it is valid or and still um, not expired. Uh, so once uh, it verifies, uh, the request can be as, uh, can be processed as usual. So that's uh, that's kind of a flow between a client and server. How those. Um, uh, tokens are used uh, basically for authentication and authorization. And also as a stateless session mechanism. Uh, so it looks simple, right? But I've already told you that it's not as simple as it looks. Uh, so it's time for some practice. Uh, I will show you how we can exploit um, insecure implementation of JSON web tokens. Um, so uh, I have a kind request to you. If you could go to this demo application I prepared and uh, register your account, log in and wait to be hacked. So basically my objective here is to hack your accounts by various vulnerabilities in JSON web tokens. Uh, so, the link uh, is available on the slide. I've also posted it on my Twitter account, ex-Twitter account, uh, Yon Labs. Uh, feel free to go there and please register because otherwise I won't be able to do any hacking. Uh, so, this is the simple application. Obviously, if you register a new user, don't uh, use your real data, uh, use a nickname, and do not reuse your real passwords because those could be, those could be leaked during our demos. Uh, once I, uh, I'm logged in, I see active users, so you've been very quick. There is uh, a lot of you already registered, so I do have... Um, some accounts to be hacked. Thank you. Uh, our first demo is about non-algorithm. So basically, there, there's only two algorithms in the RFC that uh, are mandatory. So every implementation, uh, every library which supports the RFC and JWT tokens should implement them. And those two algorithms is like HS256 
uh, HMAC with uh, SHA-256 and non-algorithm. So this non-algorithm basically means no signature. Uh, so uh, I've already prepared some, um, uh, some tokens uh, which basically use this non-algorithm. So I will try to use this one. We can go and see how it looks like. I will use this very handy jwt.io page. Uh, if we decode our token, uh, we see that uh, it uses like non-algorithm and it provides basically the same signatures, which are uh, the same claims, uh, which are uh, present in, uh, in a valid token. Uh, generated by our application, we can actually compare. So let me grab one, my token, basically. Uh, you see that my application uses HS256 algorithm. There is a set of claim. Usually there is this uh, subject uh, claim which represents the ID of a user. Uh, and there is like binary content as a signature. Uh, so, um, my, my token with non-algorithm basically looks the same, uh, but it doesn't contain a signature. It has this non-algorithm and I have this subject set to free. Uh, so, how can we use it? That's very simple. We can just replace it here and refresh the page. And Delts, you've been hacked. Are you here, Delts? I don't see any hand raised, but uh, definitely we have this Delts account and they've been hacked. Uh, so uh, what happened here? The, uh, I've already shown you that there is no signature uh, in this token. And uh, obviously, we have some problem on, in our implementation. Uh, so that's uh, an implementation uh, for verification of our tokens. And it uses this io.json web token library in version 0.9.1. Um, and it looks pretty okay, right? We are setting signing key, we are parsing token, we are getting claims, and uh, it looks okay. Uh, the problem here is that we are using parse method, method and uh, instead of parse claims JWS. Uh, so parse basically doesn't uh, verify uh, a signature. Uh, so in order to have this verification, we need to use parse claims, JWS. So uh, that's kind, uh, kind of misleading and confusing. If you don't know the details, you may make an easy mistake because parse is like um, a good name. Uh, and uh, uh, personally, I would go for this one uh, at first. Uh, so, uh, fortunately, this has been fixed, but, uh, but it's been since like the beginning of the library. The first version I've tested, it was the 0 0.9, and uh, it was uh, 2018. It was released in 2018, and uh, even though it poses a significant security risk, it hasn't been fixed until last year. Uh, so only in this 0 0.12 version it's been fixed and it was released in October 2023. Uh, and they have fixed a couple of other issues and they have very good uh, messages at the moment, exception messages. Uh, basically, uh, this message uh, explains why 
non-algorithm is not allowed anymore. Uh, so basically, um, is not allowed by default uh, because that's what the RFC says. When we take a look at the section on non-algorithm in the RFC, uh, it says that those uh, unsecured uh, tokens must not be accepted uh, by, uh, by libraries uh, unless an application directly specifies that. Uh, so in our case, we didn't specify anywhere that we uh, that we don't uh, that we allow for this non-algorithm. Uh, on the contrary, we even specified the signing key. Uh, so it kind of should uh, assume that we uh, we have the signature expected. Uh, so that's um, that's only one of the libraries, uh, and uh, not uh, not the only one with this problem. Uh, but when we take a closer look uh, and at our first demo, we see that first of all we have some RFC problem that this non-algorithm is available at all. Uh, Obviously, there is some conditions and some um, constraints under which this algorithm should be implemented, but still many, many libraries do not support it. Uh, so, do not support the RFC fully, uh, and they support non-algorithm. Uh, another problem is like the design of our library, right? We need like very clean APIs, and uh, those APIs should disallow uh, programmers to make such silly mistakes. Um, and uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, last but not least, it's our as developers' problem as well. We need to know our tools, and we need to use our tools wisely. Uh, and actually, uh, I ran into uh, this problem using some uh, example found in GitHub. I've just copied it to my project uh, just to use it with Spring and the, this JWT library, and then I tested it. And uh, yeah, I, I was pretty surprised that such a basic um, problem is still present. Uh, so um, I've mentioned that that's not the only library with this problem, so, and not the only application. Uh, take a look at uh, this exploit. Uh, this is basically one of the Metasploit exploits. Uh, so Metasploit is a tool. Uh, to automatically test uh, uh, some services. And uh, they have like a series of exploits configured, like hundreds. Uh, and one of them uh, was added like last year to address a vulnerability in SharePoint. And basically this is also related to non-algorithm and the way uh, a library or an application implements uh, how to handle non-algorithm in JWTs. Uh, another issue is uh, Node.js library, uh, which uh, also has a problem with this non-algorithm, and this one was only uh, discovered like uh, two years ago. And as I said, there is like hundreds of them, uh, and uh, there is a lot of problems because even if uh, 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 even if we use a library correctly, then still there is some underlying implementation issues. Uh, so basically, we need to be very careful what we use. We need to pay attention to the code and parse versus verify. And uh, we need to understand our library as well as it's useful to check um, some vulnerability databases to search whether or not our library that we use has any vulnerability discovered. 
Uh, when it comes to implementing verification, we need to make sure that we verify signatures. We need to check if a required algorithm is used, so the one we use on the server side. We need to check if a specific key, the one we use on the server side, is used. Uh, we need to check if a token is not expired, and uh, additionally, it's useful to uh, check other claims, depending on our application, if they match the expected values. Uh, why, why do we need to require specific algorithms and keys? Because there is like uh, some other attack vectors which uh, target um, uh, some uh, switches in uh, the usage of keys or switches in algorithms. So basically here you see a vulnerability that is related to uh, tricking a server to use HMAC SHA with RSA public key. How does it work? Basically, a regular flow is that a server uses RSA uh, asymmetric, um, uh, asymmetric cryptography uh, to generate and verify uh, tokens. So basically, uh, the token is signed with a server RSA private key and then is verified with a server RSA public key. Uh, the attack could look like the, a hacker changes the algorithm to HMAC SHA. Uh, it signs it with a server RSA public key as an HMAC secret. And then a server, uh, it uh, reads the algorithm from a header, sees HMAC SHA, so uh, it switches to HMAC SHA algorithm, but it has configured this RSA public key to be used during verification, and um, that's the way uh, how it's tricked uh, to properly and successfully verify uh, forged token. Um, another issue is that uh, those keys used for verification can be provided in, uh, in a header. So um, basically, it, this vulnerability, as you see, is due to node Jose library following the RFC. So that's funny. Uh, so um, basically, here uh, we, we have a server which uses uh, RSA for, um, for token generation and verification. Uh, and uh, in that case, the attack vector could look like the hacker generates uh, uh, a new token. Uh, this is like uh, RSA algorithm, but instead of uh, using the server token, uh, the server private key, which is not available, uh, the hacker uses its own RSA private key and provides the key in the header. And if the server is allowed to read this key and use it, then um, we have another successful exploit. Um, okay, so let's move to the second demo. Uh, let me log in as Patricia again. Uh, I wanna grab a token I've already shown you the content of this token. Uh, another issue with uh, those tokens when you take a look at this one is confidentiality problem, right? Because uh, it's important to notice that those tokens are not encrypted. They are only encoded. So basically you need to be very careful uh, what you put inside your claims. It shouldn't be any confidential data. Uh, so we have this uh, HS256 uh, algorithm. This algorithm is a symmetric algorithm. It stands for HMAC with SHA256. Um, 
And this is a symmetric algorithm, and basically it means that uh, the same secret is used for generation of a token and the verification of a token. Uh, so, uh, once we find out the secret, we can generate new tokens um, freely. Basically, as many of them as we want. Uh, so, um, for uh, for token cracking, I have this GPU, uh, GPU server available. It has uh, four GPUs installed, and I will use Hashcat to crack this token. Uh, so what is Hashcat? Hashcat is a, um, is a password cracker. Oh, sorry. Rewind. It's a password recovery tool, as they call themselves. So yeah, and so we will use this password recovery tool. This is like the most popular one. It supports like hundreds of different algorithms, and different um, tweaking to help with uh, brute force, and obviously it supports uh, GPU. So with GPU, we have much more much faster cracking. So uh, basically, I'm gonna, uh, but first of all, I will show you how many, uh, how many um, GPUs we have. So you see, so basically, we do have uh, those four GPUs. Uh, those are Tesla uh, V100, not the fastest, but uh, it's enough for our purposes. And let's do some cracking then. Uh, so basically, it takes some time to initialize. Uh, and obviously, uh, the length of our cracking depends on how uh, long our mm, secret is. In that case, it took like uh, less than 20 seconds. and. Uh, it's, it is J prime, so that was a simple one, right? Uh, and what can we do now? Uh, so basically, we can again use this very handy JWT.io, and uh, let's change the subject to seven, and we should have like a valid uh, token to be used. Uh, if it is valid or not, let's verify. Uh, I need to I need to log in again because I've removed the token uh, but this is uh, the new one I've already generated and banana ban bananas you've been hacked are you here yes you are thank you for your cooperation uh, so you've seen like four GPUs Basically, I've compared uh, those four GPUs to my uh, laptop, and it's basically the order of magnitude uh, faster. Uh, so that's like 4,000 million hashes per second. Uh, so still, it takes a lot of time to crack actual long uh, secrets, but that was very quick for our demonstration purposes. Uh, so what are the problems here? Uh, with cracking, we only need one token. So uh, it's basically impossible to detect when cracking is done, right? Because all cracking can be done offline without any communication with a verification server. So. Uh, a victim is not aware about the attack. Um, the problem, the key, uh, the key problem here was weak key, right? Uh, so um, how do we choose our keys? It's, it looks like it's not so easy tasks. Why? Because we do have many algorithms available. We have different kinds of keys. So um, we can be experts like in programming, but not necessarily in cryptography. 
right? So uh, it's good to refresh uh, our cryptography uh, best practices uh, when it comes to JSON Web Tokens. Uh, so we have uh, those four families of algorithms available in JWT tokens. That's HS family, uh, RS family, and uh, mm, this ESPS family with elliptic curves and probabilistic signatures. Uh, so basically when it comes, uh, those HS and um, RS families are the most popular and widely used. Um, and uh, a rule of thumb here is uh, to use uh, for HS family to use a secret as long as uh, the length of the hash. So for HS256, it must be like at least uh, 256 bits long, which means like 32 bytes. Uh, so um, also in that case, we need to think about our attack surface. Uh, because um, uh, in case of symmetric cryptography, the secret uh, must be uh, deployed, installed in all servers. Uh, uh, the ones responsible for generation of tokens and the ones responsible for verification only. So um, this is like a larger surface, uh, attack, attack surface and uh, moreover, uh, it's enough to compromise a single server uh, and then the entire system is compromised. Um, in case of uh, RS family, uh, there is uh, this uh, NIST uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology recommendations uh, that they say we should at least like 2K bits uh, long uh, uh, keys uh, or uh, 3K bits for security beyond to 2030. Uh, in that case, in case of asymmetric cryptography, uh, mm, it's important to think about uh, our attack surface as well. Uh, those private keys, they are only uh, available on the servers responsible for generating of our tokens. Verification servers, they need only public keys. Uh, so that's like important impact, uh, factor. Uh, also, some people say that the longer the key, uh, the slower verification. However, uh, um, in today's world, I think that it's more important to uh, focus on security because we do have very fast machines. Um, okay, so uh, let's do the third demo. Uh, oops. Uh, and the third demo shows that it's enough to like uh, uh, capture one of your tokens to make use of them. Uh, so in that case, uh, here we are using HTTPS, right? This is like secured uh, transport from our local machine to at least web server. Uh, but this application has two parts, two components. So we have this web server and we have this app server. And basically uh, I know, because I've written that, that uh, the communication between the web server and the app server is not encrypted. So I'm going to show you how to sniff it. So I'm logging to uh, my Oracle server where the demo is installed. And basically, I have this run TCP, uh, TCP dump script, which basically uh, runs TCP dump to sniff uh, any traffic on port 9090. Uh, so I need uh, some cooperation from you. 
please refresh the pages uh, in the application. Yep, thank you. That's really useful. You see the traffic's coming. Okay, 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 too much, too much. I need to stop it. And I need to find this better token. So you see that basically that's plain text. I can grab this token and I should be able to freely use it the same way as before, just replacing in my browser. And Tony, you've been hacked. Are you here? I don't see. Yes, you are. Thank you. So you see, I wouldn't be able to do it without you guys. Uh, so uh, the obvious problem here is lack of encryption. Uh, but please be careful because this was like um, inside a pr uh, kind of a private uh, network, right? Uh, this public transportation was encrypted, but this private part was not encrypted. And still it poses a significant risk because most of uh, the exploitation is done uh, from the inside. Uh, so, um, so we need to make sure that all the legs of our network communication are properly uh, encrypted. Uh, you could also see that those stolen tokens can be freely used um, as long as they are valid. Uh, so we need to take into account the expiration time to avoid long expiration times because otherwise those replay attacks basically are available. Uh, and uh, our last demo, uh, so we will use XSS to steal a token. Uh, so here, uh, here you see that we have this, uh, uh, this uh, form that basically I can set up my homepage. Uh, so I do have some XSS attack prepared. And uh, basically here, uh, underneath, it connects to my evil server and uh, uh, sends token grabbed from session storage to this evil server. And uh, this script is very like kind to inform a user that uh, their token has been stolen. Uh, okay, so let's make use of it. I will update uh, uh, my home page. Uh, so basically, when you refresh the page, and uh, again, I need your cooperation here, please, if you could click on my home page. Something, oops, uh, uh, that's not what should happen. And. Uh, uh, let me double check here. Oops, yeah, thank you. Yes, that was really neat. You are better in the debugging than I am. Yeah, on stage it's pretty, uh, pretty uh, stressful. Okay. Yep, but that was a good catch. Uh, okay, let's refresh it. And now, yes, my token has been stolen. I haven't been ha so happy for a long time. Uh, okay, so please help me and click my homepage. Click my homepage and I want to go to my evil server this time. So that's like a completely different server. Uh, and I have this uh, script to observe the logs. And yes, I'm seeing a lot of stolen tokens coming in. Thank you. And let me grab this one and again use it. 
And who's been hacked this time? Yarik, you've been hacked and you are here. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, so this script is pretty simple. That's a simple JavaScript. And the only trick is to use image source. Uh, so instead of directly connecting and, uh, to, to the server to send uh, the stolen token, uh, I'm using this image source to bypass same origin policy implemented in browsers. So that's a simple trick, pretty often used. Uh, so nothing fancy here. And the problem was that we had this uh, XSS vulnerability in our application. And there is no way to block access to a session storage for JavaScript. So uh, when it comes to best practices to protect our application against XSS, is to use content security policy. Obviously code audits, pen testing as well, and usage of good libraries and, and smart usage of uh, those um, uh, dangerous features. Uh, fortunately, we are in 2024, so most libraries have pretty good uh, um, protection against XSS, and by default, it's enabled but still some, uh, some vulnerabilities go undetected. Uh, another way uh, to, uh, to protect against uh, those attacks is to use hardened cookies as a storage mechanism for our tokens. So instead of uh, 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 storing our tokens in uh, session storage and sending them in authorization uh, header, uh, it's better to use a cookie as a, a safe uh, storage mechanism. Um, hardened cookie means that uh, those cookies use secure HTTP only and same site flags. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, still we are not safe here because with cookies there, there comes a price and uh, a price is that uh, we are now uh, prone to uh, cross-site request forgery. Uh, so um, OWASP, uh, I'm pretty sure that you know OWASP. OWASP stands for Open Web Application Security Project. Basically, that's a non-for-profit uh, organization that aims at increasing awareness uh, about security among developers. So basically, they provide a lot of good guidelines, cheat sheets uh, to deal with various uh, problems, security problems. And for uh, uh, JWTs and token site jacking, so basically, um, this, uh, those stolen tokens, uh, they propose like pretty complex solution, which I actually never seen implemented in real world. Uh, but basically it uh, relies on using like a token as well as a cookie uh, with uh, some sort of fingerprinting based on a random secure value. Um, what I can say now, that what you've seen so far, it's only like a, the tip of an iceberg. I could go on and on uh, about security problems when it comes to JWT, but we are running out of time. Uh, but it's, uh, it's good to uh, mention also like basic hygiene for our application. Uh, so uh, this basic hygiene, uh, this basic hygiene involves like um, uh, usage of uh, uh, logouts. Uh, and with, uh, with logouts, uh, we have a problem. Uh, what problem? Because there is no way to invalidate our JWT tokens. So uh, basically, how is this feature usually implemented? So um, JWT tokens are uh, perceived as a stateless session mechanism. But in that case, to implement logouts, 
um, the state strikes back basically. Why? Because usually uh, we need like some sort of uh, storage uh, on the server side to store invalidated tokens. Uh, so during verification, uh, we check uh, whether or not this token was uh, invalidated uh, or not. Uh, so um, that's one problem. Another problem is this expiration time. So basically, uh, with long expiration time, there is a risk that uh, those tokens uh, will leak and uh, then um, hackers or malicious users will be able to use them freely for a long time. Uh, so uh, here another approach is to use like refresh tokens, access tokens, and to have very short expiration times which are, uh, and those to access tokens are um, uh, renewed. Uh, so um, that's a lot of issues. And uh, basically, you see that a fool with a tool is only a fool. So uh, as developers, we need to use our tools wisely, because otherwise uh, we can end up with like, our systems compromised. Um, and so here we go to another, uh, another paradigm, because with this uh, uh, with this usage of our tools, uh, you see that we need to keep educating ourselves. So uh, there is like a number of uh, paradigms in software development, like continuous integration, continuous delivery. I always talk about continuous refactoring, but the fundamental paradigm here is continuous learning. So we need to keep educating ourselves. And that's what conferences are all about, right? So um, thank you for such a uh, effective cooperation. If you have any questions, feel, uh, please feel free to, uh, to approach me during a break. Happy to discuss any of your security concerns when it comes to JWTs.